Hello, my friends, and welcome to worship with Spearfish United Methodist Church. Spearfish is located in two places. We are located physically on the far western edge of South Dakota, almost Wyoming, on the northern edge of the Black Hills. It is just a joy to welcome you as, as we are in this physical site, but of course, we also are located online. Thanks for finding us. Thanks for paying attention and thanks for being here. We want to invite you always to become part of our digital campus, to become part of that online community. If you'll go to our Facebook page and look under groups, you'll find that it is Spearfish United Methodist Church Community. That's, that's where this community is. Join us. We would just love to have you be part with us. Hey, in the last month and a half, we have been walking through the Ten Commandments. Tonight, we are on the Eighth Commandment, and that is do not steal. So we're going to be looking to say, how is it that we, that we can be really honoring God by, by honoring the boundaries and yet creating, in a very, very positive way, the relationships? We'll take a look. We'll take a look. Would you bow with me? Let's pray. Gracious God, I lift up this moment, lift up that, this, this time and ask that you would fill it. Gracious God, we pray that you would be present in all that we do, in all that we are, in this time as we worship together. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. All right, my friends, let's worship. Arise and shine, ye children of Zion, for the Lord hath delivered thee. Arise and shine, ye children of Zion, for the Lord hath delivered thee. Open up your heart and rejoice before Him. Open up your heart and rejoice before Him. Open up your heart and rejoice before Him, for the King is your God. Arise and shine, ye children of Zion, for the Lord hath delivered thee. Arise and shine, ye children of Zion, for the Lord hath delivered thee. Open up your heart and rejoice before Him. Open up your heart and rejoice before Him. Open up your heart and rejoice before Him, for the King is our God. Our first scripture is Exodus twenty fifteen. You shall not steal. I want to invite you into a time of prayer. And as we love to do, I want to offer you the opportunity to pray for each other at home wherever you may be. If you're with someone, I want you to put this on pause in just a second and simply ask each other, what is it that you need to be praying about? You can write it down and take it home with you. Pray through the week. I would love to have you pray for each other right now. And so to simply take the time and to say, what is it that is most important in your life that needs to be prayed about? You can do this by simply praying in silence with one another. One of you can pray. All of you can pray. It doesn't matter. What matters is just the praying itself. Take that time. Let's pray. Gracious God, I want to give you thanks for your abundant love. As you have filled us and made us yours, Lord, fill us with that love, that love that runs to overflowing. We pray today for those within our lives who are dealing with sickness and with death. We pray especially for those within our own community who are dealing with the loss of loved ones. Gracious God, be present and walk with us. Walk with us as we recover. Walk with us as we fight off illness. Walk with us as we have lost loved ones and so need your guiding power and presence. Lord, love us that we may love others. We ask, Lord, your guidance that you may be at the heart and soul of all that we are and all that we do. So we pray for our church. 
and pray that you would help us to reach out to each other, moving past our own needs and desires to help those who so need your guidance, to help those who need your healing, to help those that in weakness need you. Lord, help us to be your hands and feet. Help us to be your eyes and ears. Gracious God, we reach out into the world and pray today for your peace. We pray for Ukraine and the tensions that exist over there. We pray for the Olympics as we lift them up and simply ask that you would continue to guide. Lord, we pray that you would be in places in this world that are war-torn, that are disease-torn, that are conflict-torn, that are hunger-torn. Whatever is going on, Lord, we pray for wholeness. We pray for the peacemakers and we pray for those who are working so hard to make things right and bring our world into balance. Gracious God, we pray all of this. May it be in Jesus' name, amen. I want to invite you to pray with me the prayer of St. Ignatius. Teach us, good Lord, to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for any reward, except that of knowing that we do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Our second scripture comes from Ephesians 4, verses 25 through 28. Therefore each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor, for we are all members of one body. In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. And do not give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with their own hands, that they may have something to share with those in need. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, my friends, bow with me. Let's dive in to just leave it there. Let's pray. Amen. I'm not going to take a show of hands, but it would be really interesting to ask the question of every single person who worshiped here this weekend, how many of you at some point in your young years had an adult sit you down and say, you will not steal? Now, for some of us, my hand does go up on this one. Yeah, that was as I was returning the stolen item. It was a whirly gig. I was seven years old and, and I stole it from our town's local drugstore. As if my parents wouldn't notice that. Yeah, we have been told you will not do this. But you know what we haven't been told? Why? I mean, I mean, back when I received that lecture and, and was taken back uptown to return that whirly gig, the reasons that I were given, was given were these. Do not steal. It's wrong. Do not steal. We don't do that in our house. Don't do it. It was not so much an explanation of why, it was an explanation of what. This is what, these are the rules, and this is what you're going to follow. That's important. That's really important. And we all need to hear this again and again and again. No, really, the rule on the book is don't steal. But what is there and underneath it? So many of our Ten Commandments, especially now that we're in the latter half of them, are spoken in the negative. Do not, do not, do not, do not, and do not. But what is really powerful is when we take a look at those and we begin to to phrase them in the positive. How is it that we would, would do this? Do not steal, but how we could say that in a positive would be to say, let's see, what's the opposite of stealing? Um, do give. Um, do share. Do respect. Do build. Do care. Do all of the, there are so many positives that we can be using. Why, why is it that stealing is such a big deal? Because the fact of the matter is that in every civilization that is out there, pretty much in the history of our entire world, this rule has been there. Why is that so important? Because it is one of the absolute foundation stones of civilization. And you know the incredible problems that we run into when this is broken. There is part of our civilization, our culture, our community that is absolutely ruptured when we, when we do this. And so we begin to say, well, what would happen if we would begin with telling people, teaching people about contentment. Why don't we be content with what we have and who we are? How about boundaries? We teach people that these are the boundaries that you have to respect in all that we do. What about 
the, the power of relationship. If you want to have relationship, you've got to be abiding by this. If you want to have community, this is what it's all about. You can't cross that line into theft. You, you've got to be sure to maintain who you are in order to maintain who community is. <sighs> Let me tell you about gents. One of the rules that, that is at, at, at an absolute core that is directly related to, to this rule of do not steal is the golden rule. You will do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Gents was a friend of mine. Gents was a brilliant young man. Gents had just gotten out of prison the week that I met him. And he was this, he was this bubbly, bright, on the ball, sharp guy. He was, he was really, really fun to be around. He had come to, uh, to town in order to live with his cousin because he had no place to live. He could not. He burned every bridge going back to his family. Gents had just gotten out of prison for meth production. That he was alive at all was a miracle. The day came when Gents and his partner were cooking meth up north of Bismarck on Highway 83. Now this was in a day before they had figured out a lot of the lockdowns. Today, most of the meth that comes up into the Dakotas is coming right through that super pipeline from northern, northern Mexico and uh, parts of California. Gents was an expert cooker. He knew how to make this stuff, and that's no small thing. How many of those meth labs blew up and took everybody with them? They're highly combustible. Gents had been awake. Not only was he a cooker, he was a taker. He was addicted to meth as well. He had been awake for a month prior to this day. Had not slept a wink in a month. And on that day, he and his partner had enough meth that it was time to put it into their own pipeline. Their pipeline began in Bismarck. And so they were traveling up Highway 83 to get to Bismarck. And it was when the second helicopter went over that they knew that they were in trouble. And sure enough, as soon as they came up over that next rise, there was the roadblock waiting for them. They looked in their rearview mirror and knew that they were already blocked off. The only reason that gents did not die that day was that in their hurry to get into Bismarck, they had forgotten their guns because these two guys were armed to the teeth. They forgot their guns. They had all the meth and nothing to shoot. On that day, they were arrested. On that day, Jens went cold turkey. He went cold turkey with meth, he went cold turkey with alcohol, and he went cold turkey with tobacco. All three at once. And it was hell on wheels. Holy smokes. Amazingly, Jens survived. He survived the arrest. He survived going cold turkey off of three things at once. He survived the prison time. He survived his family abandoning him, except for his cousin. And he had to start over. When we begin with gents, one of the things that we have to do is to say, gents, do not steal. What was it that gents was stealing? Well, it it would be really easy to say, all right, there were some physical things that gents was stealing. Gents was stealing anhydrous ammonia. Anhydrous ammonia is a fertilizer. You see it in the great big white uh, pill-shaped trailers that are out. And this was immediately before the time when they figured out how to lock those darn things up. Extremely dangerous, extremely dangerous to handle. Gents stole that. Well, gents stole money. Gents stole ammunition. I'm not sure if Gents stole his car or not, but Gents stole. But it wasn't just the physical stuff that Gents stole. What else did he steal? Gents stole trust. 
He stole trust from his family. He betrayed his family in so many ways, so many times. You can only steal that from the ones you love so many times before they just say, that's it, we're done. Gents stole sanity from those who were around him. His old friends, wow, there's no way. There is no way that you can be around someone who is that hard hooked on meth. It destroys you, it changes you. He stole friendship from those who were around him. He stole family. He stole, he stole, he stole. He couldn't be trusted unless it was to lie. These are the things that gents stole. And it was an incredible thing to watch him, to watch him as, as he put his life back together. He grounded himself squarely in Jesus Christ, lived with his cousin, who was a fantastic influence on him, and used his former addiction into the jobs that he, that he would get. He learned how to work in a new way. He learned how to make new friends. He learned how to enter into new relationships. He learned. But the first thing that he had to learn was, you will not steal. You will not steal. You will leave it there. Gents had to learn in a whole new way of what it means to do just the opposite. When you steal, you are destroying relationship. You are destroying community. You're destroying family. The tricky part is, and this, this is what we know, is that it is really, really subtle sometimes. Because there are times when you and I will steal and it's super easy to rationalize that. Have you ever cheated on your income tax? You know, things like that. that is that technically stealing? Yes, it is. But we have lots of ways that we can rationalize that. We have, we have all kinds of reasons to say, well, you know, it was just a little. And they'll, they'll never notice. They'll never catch it. There are all these ways that even in little ways, we rationalize our own theft. But the fact of the matter is, it'll catch up to you. And the fact of the matter is that learning and setting and keeping boundaries is very, really difficult. Even for the most honest of us, there are still ways that we need to be on guard at all times. All right, so what is this about then? Let me take you on a tangent that on its surface seems like it has nothing to do. It does. Ralph and Theda were married in about 1934. He was a huge farmer, huge raw bone farmer. And when they started farming in the middle of the depression, you got to be tough as nails to be able to do that. My favorite picture of him was about three years later in about 1937, their firstborn son. And Ralph was standing in the middle of the farmyard laughing, his head thrown back in laughter. And he was, he held his arm straight out and his three-year-old boy was standing on his hand. That's how strong this guy was. He was incredible. He and Theta worked hard and hard and hard. If you've ever heard those stories from our, from our grandparents back in the 30s and how they made it, especially if you were out on the farm, well, one of the things that they did was to make every penny count. And that meant that you didn't just go willy-nilly into town. It meant that you created your own enter entertainment. One of the things that they loved to do, as did so many in their, in their neighborhoods, they didn't have, of course, there was no television, but they had the radio. And they figured out which stations that you could turn to on the weekend, especially on a Saturday night. And Ralph and Theta loved to dance. And so they would, they would roll up, they would move the furniture and they would roll up the rug. And those two would dance in the living room on a Saturday night. 
And as their boys grew, the three boys were invited to dance as well. They had so much fun doing this that after a while, they invited the neighbors. And so another couple or two couples or three couples would come and they would push the furniture, roll up the rug and dance. But this time, uh, Theta would make some food and have something to drink. And uh, they would just laugh into the night. And then, I don't know if it was Ralph or if it was Theta, they put two and two together. And they thought, wait a minute. Space, dancing, fun, music, laughter. How about we invite everybody? And that was the beginning of it. They went into the barn, and along with the boys, they scoured that barn until it was clean, clean, clean. And they invited everybody in every Saturday night. I don't know how long they did this, if it was a year or five years, I don't know. I could never get past them telling the story of just what one dance was like. And sometimes they had to start off with just playing the radio. But at other times, they were actually able to save up and to bring in a band. These would have been the old accordion bands. And they were waltzes and polkas, two steps and foxtrots. And they would dance and dance and dance and charge the neighbors a nickel apiece. That's how they made it through the Depression. Every Saturday night, everybody brought a nickel and helped Ralph and Theta through the Depression. When Ralph and Theta were doing this, now that was a service for them. That's how they survived. That's how they put food on the table. That's how they bought groceries, were those nickels that people would bring in. It benefited them. But what about the community? Did the community benefit? Absolutely, you can still find people even 70 and 80 years later. If you talk to the right one, they will tell you about the dances over at Chapman's Barn. They were building community. They were building relationship. When we talk about you will not steal, what we need to do is immediately flip that on its ear. We need to immediately be looking at the opposites and asking, well, if you're not going to steal, if that is out of bounds, then what are we supposed to do? What we are supposed to do is to pay attention to the exact opposite. What we are supposed to do is to, is to pay attention to what is the difference between taking, stealing, and giving, sharing, caring. There's a huge difference because the stealing negates all of that. It's not about boundaries. It's not about caring for others. It's not about respect. It's not about community. It's not about any of that. So how is it then that we flip this commandment on its ear and look at the positive and to say what is absolutely important is the formation of family and community. And this begins when we have those boundaries, when we speak to others, giving of ourselves. Ralph and Theta figured this out. Every Saturday, <clears throat> they would give their space and they would give on themselves, and they would give of what it meant to be reaching out to others to intentionally, intentionally build community, to intentionally care for each other, because you better believe that at those dances, the conversation was all about community. Now, part of it would have been just, how's your crops? Have you got anything? Part of it would have been, what's the price of wheat and how bad is that? But part of it would have been, how's our neighbor? How's our neighbor? How's our neighbor? How's our neighbor? A few years after this, Ralph was out in the field. They had a crop of corn 
and Ralph had a corn picker. It was one of those early corn pickers that would do one, maybe two rows at a time. And the darn thing jammed as they, as they tended to. And so Ralph <sighs> reached in without disconnecting in order to unjam that and lost his arm. Took the entire arm off up to the elbow. What do you do with that? What do you do when you are a one-handed farmer well, <clears throat> the answer is you go down the road to the next farm where your next door neighbor is a one-handed farmer. Ralph lost his left arm. His neighbor lost his right arm. And those two became glued at the hip. Whenever it was time to do mechanics, whenever it was time to do anything, those two went to see each other and they were experts at using pliers, wrenches, nuts, bolts, screws, one with one arm, the other with the other, standing right next to each other. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the friendship that you would build? Can you imagine the relationship that would deepen? This is the opposite of you will not steal. You will give everything that you have. You will give of yourself. I want you to see, it's the same rule. It's the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's not just common sense. It absolutely is the foundation stone of who we are and how we function as a church, as families, as community. When we say, don't steal, we simultaneously have to be saying, give everything that you have. Give of yourself. Give of who you are. Help when help is needed. Reach out when, when reaching out is needed. This is who we are and this is how we function. This is exactly what Paul was talking about. And he said, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. For we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you're angry and do not give the devil a foothold. The one who has been stealing must steal no longer. I love this verse because it gives us the that commandment, but it goes on. Listen to how this verse goes on. The one who is stealing should steal no longer, but must work, doing something useful with his own hands so that he may have something to share with those who are in need. It's not about gathering, greedy, self-centeredness. It's not about that. It is about reaching out to our neighbors. This is who we're called to be. This is the power of that commandment. Stop your stealing so that we can give to those who are in need. There's the power. There's the power. So I want you to hear the, the doubleness on side, the, the, the two sides of this. On the one hand is that negative that says, no, we need to remember that we are instructed not to steal. And it's up to each of us to figure out what that means, how, that, how it is it that, that we can, how is it that we steal, how is it that we need to stop. But the flip side of that absolutely is the positive that says we give ourselves for others. We give to those who are in need. We do not hold back, we give. There's the power of the commandment. For thousands and thousands of years, that commandment has been in and among us. It has been in every single religion. It is there to help guide us, to strengthen us, and to teach us how we as people are supposed to live day by day, millennium by millennia. May it be that you know the power of giving yourself to others. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you pray with me? 
Lord, I want to give you thanks for the ways that we have to reach out to give to each other. Teach us again and again, Lord, what it means not to steal. Teach us again and again what it means to simply live and love. In Jesus' name, amen.
right, my friends, receive this blessing. May you go now as a people who have been named by God and claimed by God so that you can live the love of God by not stealing, but oh, so much deeper than that, by giving of yourself everything that you have. Go in the name of God who is your creator, Jesus Christ who is your savior, the Holy Spirit who is your guide, and as you go, may it always be with the peace of God. Go.